Welcome to The Spotlight. My name is Sofia Hernandez. In today's episode, we are talking to a woman who followed her gut and left a job she knew no longer suited her. It was a risk, a leap of faith. Some might even call it insanity, but for her, it was the best decision ever and the change she knew she needed in order to feel complete fulfillment. In today's episode, we are talking about how to turn your side hustle into your nine to five, how to know the right time to leave a job and how to turn that side hustle into a business. Today in the spotlight is Lisi Perrera. Hi, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Lisi Perrera and I am the founder of Silkio Branding. We are a small boutique marketing agency based out of South Florida. And can you tell me, let's kind of backtrack a little bit. So you graduated college, uh, you went to FIU, and then you started working for this global marketing company. How did that happen in the beginning process of all that? Um, okay, so my story is a little bit all over the place. Um, I've always been somebody that likes a lot of different things and knows very clearly what I like and what I don't like. So um, when I was in school, I knew I wanted to go into business for sure. I didn't know what kind of business. I didn't know anything about marketing. That realm just didn't exist for me. So I was in school for international business and um, I took my first import export class and I hated it. And I mean, like really hated it. And at this point I'm a junior and I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to do with my career? Um, a friend invited me to go into actually I think I was a sophomore. Nonetheless, I hated this class. And one of my friends said, come with me to this marketing club meeting. Um, if you hate it, no big deal. At least you're going to get some pizza. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm there for the pizza. Um, and I was hooked. I mean, I fell in love with marketing that day. It sounds super cliche and corny, but that's exactly the way it went for me. Um, the next week I was in my advisor's office and I asked her to add marketing as a second major to my degree. And through this organization, um, I actually landed an internship working with Movado Watches. And um, so they are a global luxury watch company. They have a Latin America Caribbean office based out of here in South Florida. And I started interning um, a couple months into having transitioned into this like marketing is my new life. Um, and so I was working there and it was really cool. I got some really, really cool experiences. Graduation came around and they offered me a full-time job, which was so cool. Um, they had had interns before, but nobody that had actually been hired to stay. So it was really cool. Um, one of who was my boss at the time, she got pregnant. And so I got to really step into a higher role where I was doing a lot of different things, got to travel for work and it was super cool. But Eventually, you do kind of learn the ins and outs of corporate, and I realized very quickly that the corporate lifestyle and just chasing that corporate ladder was not something that I wanted for myself. Um, and I was like, okay, well, you know what? This was never the goal anyway. Like, I always wanted to have my own business, and now I know that I love marketing. So what is the kind of natural next step here? Um, so I quit my job and started working for a small marketing agency in Miami. Um, and I was only there for a couple of months because COVID happened. Um, so I was there as a contractor um, and I'm Hispanic. So imagine me telling my Hispanic parents that I was working at this big safe corporate job and I was going to be leaving to work as a contractor for a marketing agency and not a year in, all of a sudden I have no work because all of their clients had to put on pause when the pandemic started. So I was like, well, what in the world am I going to do now? And um, I kind of just started picking up freelance gigs wherever I could. I didn't know what to charge people. I didn't know how to land a client. I only knew how to do marketing. I didn't know anything about running a small business. All I knew was how to do marketing and how to do marketing well. Um, and that's kind of just where the company started. Um, again, this was in the middle of COVID. So my parents always wanted to play on the safe side. Um, my mom's a teacher and she was like, I think it'd be really great if you got a job as a teacher 
my school actually just lost their business and marketing teacher. So it's only natural. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I really don't want to be a teacher, but man, like I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and it actually ended up being such a great step for my career because um, I was able to build my business while still maintaining a salary coming in. And everything that I was teaching is essentially what I was putting into practice in my business. So we're talking business basics, marketing basics, accounting, finance. It was almost like a refresher course for me in terms of going back to be, back to basics in business. And um, that was super cool. It's just kind of crazy to see how life always ends up working out perfectly. Um, and here we are just going into year two of really doing this um, crazy, 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 crazy thing that I call my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I want to kind of go, there's a lot to unpack. So let's kind of go. A little yeah, I know what, what kind of, when you were again, working in this big global corporation, what really pushed you to kind of look elsewhere? Because kind of like you said, like, you know, your mom was probably like, and probably a lot of other people like this girl's got a cush. She has a great job at a great place. You know, she'd be crazy to leave. What did you think for you, what was that push that you needed to look elsewhere? Honestly, I feel like as humans, we spend a lot of our time looking for fulfillment. Um, and the projects I was working on were super cool. I mean, I got to work with crazy brands like Ferrari watches and we put a Ferrari car simulator on a cruise. I mean, that had never been done before. You went into the cruise store, the last thing you expected to see was a Ferrari car that you could simulate and drive. Um, and so I got to be part of these super cool projects. And then at the end of the day, we were just making this like multi-million dollar company, more millions of um, It didn't give me that fulfillment that I was looking for in terms of like, my career is making a difference. Um, and that's kind of where I knew that I wanted to just step into working with smaller businesses because every big business started as a small business at some point, you know, um, and they can definitely get there. I tell my clients all the time, like you can get to be these huge monster businesses that you want to be as long as you have your foundations. Right. And I, I feel like it's so much more fulfilling to work with someone from the beginning and help them grow into doing all these super cool projects. So when did you kind of know, so you, you knew how you felt, right? You knew, you know how you felt in the moment and you were ready to get out. What was kind of that like switch point? You know, again, you had this side hustle that you were creating to make you be like, all right, now is when I'm going to jump ship. And now is when I'm going to take flight and try something new. Um, okay. So I honestly didn't have a plan and it's, that's what makes it kind of the craziest. I had a job. I had a great job and I had a friend who was working at this agency um, where I eventually stepped into. And she said, hey, um, they're looking for somebody at my company. And I know you said that you were not really feeling it at your job. And I said, you know what? Call your boss and set up an interview, like pass over my resume. If she wants to meet me then I want to meet her because I feel like, you know, I need a change. And I didn't know anything about this company. I don't know anything about what they did, but you kind of sometimes just have to take a leap of faith and step into those opportunities and those doors that are opened for you because somebody can knock on that door, but it's up to you to open that door and step on into it, you know? And for you, so you now, again, we're navigating this unknown terrain of trying to build this little something into something that could actually be a way of, for income and career. Uh, tell me about those beginning stages of flow, so flow uh, branding and what your mind was going through and kind of the, the process really to kind of solidify it and make it into something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I feel like that just kind of describes everything, but um, essentially everybody feels at, at one point, like you just don't know what you're doing. Um, imposter syndrome is very, very real. But I'm here to tell you that the only imposter syndrome in the room is imposter syndrome, okay? Um, there are people, even in my corporate world that I met high up there that they were like, I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and when you, when you hear that, when you've been around these people that are much smarter than you and much more experienced than you and they open up and they can say that, it makes you realize, you know what? I can do this too. 
there are people that have done what I've done with less experience and people that have done what I've done with less knowledge of the industry, less connections. And so those beginning days was a lot of trying to convince myself, like you so got this girl and a lot of just putting in the work. Um, at first I was kind of just trying to line, land clients and build income somehow. And then when I realized, okay, this is kind of turning into something I sat down and was like, okay, what, what do businesses need in order to be a business? Like we have the income and we have the clients now to get official. What are the things that I need? One of my best friends, she is an attorney and I sat with her and I was like, I need help. Like I need to legalize this, help me out with my son biz, help me out with all of these things. And um, I just kind of reached out to people that I knew that could help me get started. Um, asking for help sometimes seems like the biggest step and almost like we can't figure it out on our own, but that's okay. You don't need to figure out everything on your own. Um, and that was a really big learning for me too, is kind of like just asking for help. And that's what I did. And I still feel like this is the early stages of my career and of my business. So I still stop to ask a lot of questions and it makes a huge difference in the amount of time that I spend trying to figure something out, failing, um, or looking just in the wrong places when somebody can point you in the right direction. And you talked a little bit about imposter syndrome. And I have to think that that's probably a lot of what you felt, you know, in those, again, going from just a big company and people mm -hmm. probably looking at you and being like, what the heck is she doing? Like, what is she thinking? You know, how did you even navigate that aspect of it? Um, you know, having that kind of self-confidence in yourself and in your dream and what you knew you wanted for yourself. Um, I didn't always stand into what my worth was just because of this whole, oh man, you know, maybe I need to offer them a discount because I really, really want to land this client. Like they're going to be so great on my portfolio. Um, and a lot of times we do this and I've spoken with other, especially female entrepreneurs. I feel like as women, we tend to fall into this a lot, um, where you don't value or you don't step into the value that you know you're worth um and that's a big no-go i mean battling imposter syndrome it's really really hard my top tips for that is ultimately you have to surround yourself with people that are going to build you up um listen to mentors they don't even have to know you're your mentors okay like robert kiyosaki jenna kutcher all these people they don't know they're my mentors but they're my mentors, you know, like surround yourself with these people that are going to build you up and build up the thoughts and the ideas that are stirring up inside of you. Um, little by little, that gives you the confidence and rejection also helps you build confidence as crazy as it sounds, because you realize what you did wrong in order to improve for the next time. So if I send a pitch to a client or I have a meeting and we ultimately decide not to work together for whatever reason. I tend to ask for feedback and understand why. Is it a price objection? Is it an experience objection? Is it not the right time for you? And from those things, I can learn and improve for the next client. Because ultimately, you want to be able to serve people in the best way possible. Like, if you genuinely care, people will see that. Um, and that's going to be, that's going to go beyond any imposter syndrome any objection that they have of your age or your price point or your worth your experience because they will see that you genuinely care that's a good piece of advice and i know too you know in this navigation of going from this one job to another job to now you're on your own um what was that kind of like as far as navigating you know having that nine to five and then also the side hustle on the side um, a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> I think if I'm doing the math correctly, I really have only had SoFlo branding as my only full-time job for about seven or eight months now um, because I was working, I was picking up freelance while I was working as a contractor and then I was working as a teacher and I kind of just always had things going on. Um, so really you kind of learn to 
juggle a lot of things. I would say get a good planner and uh, allow time, idle time in the middle, right? So um, idle time is something that I'm not the best at. I work on this every single day. As entrepreneurs, as women in business, as just busy people, we tend to fill our schedules from the second that we wake up until we go to bed. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to go to a yoga class and then I'm going to work and then I'm going to go work on my side hustle. I'm going to go see my mom and I'm going to do all of these things. But what happens if something comes up unexpectedly in the middle of that day where you have to drop everything? Now you're behind on everything or you're moving things around. And there are always things that we can't um, predict. Like I got sick and we had to postpone this call, for example. But having that idle time is something that I've been working on. Still not perfect, but have been working on to incorporate in my day because it does help with the balancing act a lot. This is your time to otherwise just fill in the gaps when something comes up. And this could be something as crazy as like a client called with an emergency, or I'm just going to use this time to see my mom because nobody has anything going on. Um, and that has been a huge game changer for me. It has helped me with my sleepless nights a ton. Um, other than that, girl, America runs on Dunkin. I run on Dunkin, okay? I... I spent a lot of time just kind of grinding um, and it's now where I'm trying to focus a little bit on myself and, uh, you know, career is important, but it's also important for us to take care of ourselves. Do you feel like you kind of came into that mindset um, more recently now that you are your own boss rather than, you know, when you're in that typical, you know, leadership ladder and maybe you fall somewhere in the middle? you know, that you have higher ups, you have people to look towards that. You may feel more of that pressure, whereas, you know, you kind of control your own game. Or like, when do you feel like you kind of fell more into that mindset? Um, it's definitely been a recent thing. And it's more so come as a realization of, um, I'm sure you guys have seen this trend that's going around that says, um, I didn't want to work a nine to five. So I became my own boss. And now I work 24 seven. That is 100% true. And I realized that, hey, I just bought myself a job. Like I didn't leave corporate life because I wanted to work 24 seven. I left corporate life because I was feeling really unfulfilled and I was working a ton. Um, so when you're your own boss, you really have to hustle because if you fail, you're failing for yourself. You're failing for employees. You're failing for clients. It's not like in a corporate company, you can rely on somebody else. So that puts even more pressure on you, I would say. And you kind of have to come to this realization of, all right, look, nobody's gonna die if an email is not perfect, perfect two weeks in advance, okay? Um, we're all human. And especially now with this pandemic and all of this crazy stuff that's going on, I feel like people have kind of learned to have a little bit more grace for each other. and. Um, for themselves so it's definitely definitely been a recent kind of like a realization or objective to make this idle time but it's definitely something important for anybody in any career space whether you're just in school or you're working full-time or you're working full-time on a side business and a corporate business um, having that idle time and that time for yourself is really important I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the growth of SoFlow branding. I think a lot of times when people have projects or, or, or business of their own that they are growing, there's a lot of mixed emotions in that growth process, right? There's like, you're excited when you, when you, when something goes right and something goes good, when you get a client, when you see some success, you feel very uncertain in the moments where it's down or you want to give up, you know, it's like that whole roller coaster. How have you kind of navigated that um, and what that process has been like for you? Um, I definitely have a great support system in terms of family, my boyfriends, my friends. Um, that has been tremendous. A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of women in business, a lot of my friends really um, are that go-getter type and we don't ask for help. Like we mentioned earlier, we don't really like to kind of 
showcase our weaknesses. Um, and it's, it's not that you have to advertise your weaknesses, but you definitely can lean on other people sometimes. Um, and sometimes we have to learn that the hard way. So I know this year has been a huge year for me in terms of learning to lean on others, learning to lean on God, learning to lean on myself, um, and when to not, right? So there's a time when you have to figure your stuff out, and there's a time when you can reach out for help. Um, managing the emotional roller coaster that is business is something that you will 100% have to go through. Um, whether you're in corporate or you're working for a small business or you are the small business um, because things are always going to happen outside of our control and things are always going to happen that we're at fault for and there are things that are going to happen that you're not at fault for but you have to essentially assume the fault for um, and in the same way things that are going to happen that are freaking phenomenal or things are gonna happen that are great that you're not gonna be able to take the credit for because it was a team effort or you need to build up somebody else on your team. Um, and I think it's a lot of just being satisfied with where you are. And that is a challenge, my friend, a challenge in itself because you have all of these ambitions and you have all of these things and life is, not part, perfect life is far from perfect um I guess my advice would be just kind of reflect within yourself but if you feel like man this is really rough I need to talk it out with somebody call up your business bestie she doesn't have to be your best friend in real life if she doesn't get that um you know have somebody have some women in your circle that you can lean on and say hey like I know that you have your own business how did you deal with xyz Oh, I lost a client, like, what do I do now? I feel so lost, or I think I need to fire somebody. Like, I've never had to fire somebody. What do I do now? Um, I recently got plugged in with a couple of women's groups here in South Florida, and it's been huge because now you have women in your circle that they totally get it. And those same groups exist for people in corporate, exist for teachers, exist for stay-at-home moms, exist for bloggers. So you can always find your kind of niche of people and lean on them because they know nobody knows what you're going through, but these people can get pretty close. I love that. I have, um, when I moved here, I live in California. Um, I found a, a woman's group like that too. And it's so true. Like you don't, you know, it's always weird to, to ask for support from strangers, right? Because these are people you don't know, but you're all in the same boat doing the same thing, you know? So it, it, it definitely is a nice support system for sure. Um, talk to me a little bit about some of the, I think an area where maybe you have found the biggest obstacle and the solution to help you overcome that within this whole entire process. Um, okay, so when I started, this whole journey, I knew one thing and I knew that I knew how to do marketing. Okay. I had worked cor corporate marketing. I had worked small business marketing. Um, and I had dabbled in blogger life for about two years. So I knew small business. I knew Miami. I knew corporate I knew marketing going into business. <laughs> I realized I don't know actually anything about running a business. Um, and the biggest struggle really has been the legal and accounting departments, because I have found that creatives like me, we have this vision and we know all the things we want to do. And we'll focus on doing these amazing things for our clients. But then our businesses kind of take the back burner. Um, and the solution to all of this has been, again, leaning on this support system. Um, I hired an attorney. Is she expensive? Yes. Does she do an amazing job of things that I don't even understand what she does half the time? Yes. An accountant, you need an accountant to help you out in your business. A lot of times these networking opportunities, they present themselves to you as an opportunity for you to meet the people that are going to be helping you. Um, your network is your net worth. People say that all the time. It's a little bit cliche, but 
um, who you know can really help to build you up. Um, so if you don't know the answer, which you will come across those times, just ask because somebody does and somebody has been there. Get mentors, um, physical mentors, people you can chat with on Zoom, people you can meet for a coffee, books, podcasts, all of those things are mentorship opportunities essentially that you can tap into for knowledge and for growth. Um, you're going to meet people and they're going to be like, wow, you know all of these things. And you're going to meet people and they're going to be like, you don't know anything. And both of them are probably right. So um, you want to step into rooms where you're not the smartest person and you want to step into rooms where people can help you with the questions that you have or teach you something that you maybe never even thought of. And for me, so, so true on so many levels because I'm not an attorney and I I'm definitely, definitely not an accountant, okay? So having people to support me in those areas of business have been huge. And it, most of us do taxes on TurboTax or with an accountant. It's the same thing with business, right? You wouldn't have yourself doing something that you don't know and mess it up and then the IRA comes after you. It's the exact same thing. So yeah. kind of just treating your business like a person. Yeah. That's yeah. your BFF, girl. <laughs> I love that. And can you tell me a little bit too, I think, you know, treating it like a person, right? A person has its own personality and its own brand. And I think, especially when you go from working for a company, right, that has its own, um, you know, set of rules and their value system and their own idea of who they are and how, what they stand for. When you branch off into your own thing, how do you solidify yourself and your brand and what you want it to be and, and, and in creating that? That's a really great question. Um, I had no clue what I wanted to do um, in terms of like, I needed to find clients and money fast. I knew that I wanted to step into this role of doing essentially what I'm doing now, but I thought I wasn't prepared. And I was like, it's not the right time. Why is this happening to me? Like, why do we have to go into this mess in the world right now where I have to frantically figure out something that I thought was going to be like part of a five-year plan and um when the time comes to do it you kind of just do it um and things will fall into place and sometimes like you start with something and it's not perfect rebrand later down the line okay um rebranding happens all the time huge brands do it recently we saw in the last couple of years, a lot of luxury brands rebranded their logo, like Burberry and Eves, um, YSL. I can't pronounce anything today. <laughs> Burberry, YSL. You um, said it good. You said it good. <laughs> like Yves Saint Laurent. Um, <laughs> too much Emily in Paris, girl. <laughs> but I love that show. So recently, we've seen a big shift in rebrands for a lot of luxury brands. Like Burberry, they simplified their logo. YSL, they simplified their logo. Rebrands, they happen. It's okay. And the biggest, most important life-changing business advice that I ever heard, which I think I actually heard of a podcast or like Pinterest is start before you're ready. And for me, that's kind of how it went. I didn't know a solidified like mission statement or brand colors or logo that I wanted. I was like, all right, give me a pen and paper. I had come up with some name ideas. Like this is turning into something. This was freelance. I was working by my name and now I wanted to turn this into something, but I didn't want to wait until something grand happened because if we wait until something huge happens, you're not going to do anything. So I kind of just ran with it. And at the time I managed a South Florida based blog called Full of Slow Flow. So the Slow Flow transition was just natural. I had met a lot of small businesses through there. Um, someone that I met in my blogging days is actually a client now. And so it was kind of just like a natural progression for me from my blogger days, transitioning in, people already knew me as like the SoFlo girl. Um, but it doesn't always happen like that for everybody. Sometimes you just kind of have to go with it and figure it out later. But if you feel this calling to step into something, again, just step in, don't wait until the perfect time because a rebrand can happen later, logo and color changes and setting your mission statement and an org chart, all of those things 
can come later. If you're providing good, valuable service or products to somebody, they will come, you know, and then you can call your girl. And they yeah, for sure. And can you tell me something, one thing that, um, something that you wish you would have been able to tell yourself, you know, looking back at what you were years ago to who you are now, something that you wish you would have been able to tell her? Girl, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like we kind of go into these panic modes because things are not perfect. Um, I've always been the, I want my life to happen a specific way. This is my timeline kind of person. And very quickly, very abruptly, things can change. And it almost never will go according to plan. Sometimes people say, hey, you know, I want to be married at 25, have my kids at 27, be retired by 30, and that's their life but the likelihood of that happening is not very high just because life doesn't work that way. It's not made to revolve around the plans that we have. Um, so to my former self, to anybody in this kind of what the heck do I do now position, girl, it's going to be okay. I promise. Just do what you're doing because a lot of times we feel like we just, we're lost. Nobody's there to check on us and say, hey, you're doing a good job. But you know what? You're doing the best that you possibly can. And um, we know a lot more things than we give ourselves credit for. And we are more valuable than we give ourselves credit for a lot of times. So just stepping into like, you know what? I actually do got this. Um, I'm going to be okay is the perfect way to kind of just move about business and life, careers, um, moving up the corporate ladder, starting a company, all of that good stuff. Yeah, no, I love that you got this. I, I, um, a friend of mine is going through something and I, and I that, think that simple phrase is just like the instant motivator, you know, like that's all you need. Just three words. You got this. Lisa, okay. and, Go ahead. No, I mean, honestly, it's, it seems so simple and you're like, oh gosh, that doesn't, I don't know, like, it seems so simple, but sometimes that really is all you need to hear. Um, and this can go for anything, whether you're in business or you work for a company. Um, I remember I had a friend that she, she was up for this promotion and they wanted to relocate her. And she's like, I really don't want to move unless they're paying me X amount of salary. I'm like, girl, just ask for it. Like, just step into that. You're going to be okay. They're not going to fire you for asking something. Just ask and you are going to be okay like you so got this and you know what if it doesn't work out you have other options okay everything is always going to be okay we never look back on life and say gee you know what like I really really regret asking for a bigger salary nobody looks back and says I really really regret like leaving my corporate job that I was miserable at to start a company, even if you fail, you now have this awesome experience. So really, girl, you're gonna be okay. I love it. Lizzie, thank you so much for joining us here on the spotlight. Um, again, if you wanna catch her social links, they will be put down below. And again, you can catch a new episode of the spotlight every Thursday on any streaming platform. Thank you. Thank you.